All right, let's make a hydroponic system to grow plants out of milk jugs. We're going to talk about the construction with the lumber. So you can grow vertical, maximize your space. We'll talk about the slope so you can get the water running right. So when it gets pumped to the top, it returns to the bottom, starts all over. And we'll talk about these areas right here. And also this one right down here. We'll talk about getting around the bend so you don't have to buy PVC elbows. And how to get it all connected together so it doesn't leak. I even use milk jugs for the return. We'll talk about how to circulate the water. How to hook up the pump. Which one I use. And how to control the flow. Alright, let's get started. Now this system works with a bunch of plants, but leafy greens work best. Now to get started, I already had this ledge set up, so I'm going to use that. But really, all you need are two posts. You can use 4x4s. I've got 2x4s because I'm just going to screw them to the back of this ledge. Whatever you use, just make sure it's secure and nice and sturdy. So we're just going to take a common deck board, costs about 6 bucks. And lay one end down on the ledge. Now here's how I figured out the slope. I set my jugs down on the side. And checked where the water level would be. Now if I just set these all like this. It would come out the front and the back at the same time. So we've got to raise one end up. Now after I played around with it a little bit. I figured out that if I set it up. One and a half inches. About the length of a two by four. That would allow water to come in the back and start flowing out the front before it backflowed. So I didn't want to use a lot of lumber, I just wanted to use one board. So I messed around with them, I drilled some holes, just played around with the jugs until I got them right. Then after playing around for a little bit, we figured out that for every four feet of run, we had eight inch of rise. So if you set your board up, an easy way is to take a four foot level, measure a rise or a drop of eight inches. So that's how we figured out the slope and putting the one hole in the back. Now we need a couple holes in the top for the plant. And all I did was take this milk jug. It's from Almond Breeze. And I like them because they're sturdy. They last for years. But all I did was put a couple of pilot holes wherever I was going to drill a hole. You could put a plant on the top, but I'm going to start with them down here. It's up to you. Now I have them down here because when we have the water flowing in here, it's going to stay down about at this level. And that's going to leave about an inch of airspace for the air roots. So if I put the hole back here, you've got about three inches. It's a long way for your tiny plants. So we're going to start back here. You can move them once they get bigger. It's all up to you. For our purposes, we're going to start with two holes right here. And the one hole in the back. So we just drill a couple of pilot holes. And I'm not going to measure. I'm just going to drill a couple in the center. And one on the back. Be careful if you're doing this. Take your drill. This is a hole saw. And put it in reverse. It's going to be a lot safer. And take your time. Put your drill bit in the pilot hole. Start out very slow and drill down away from your hand. And just take it easy. That was a one and a half inch hole saw. And we use a two inch hole saw for where we're gonna put our plants. See that? Nice and even. So now you have to make about 21 of these or however big you're making your system. So for my system, since we're having an eight inch rise for every 48 inch run, I got 8 foot boards, which is 96 inches. We're going to rise 16 inches for each slope. So we drilled out all our containers, got our first slope set up. And we poured water in just to test it. See if they would run, not leak. Once we got it all right, we're ready to go. I put one more scab right here. It's 
it's going to be the bottom of the top slope. We got our slope right. Put a little scab for the next one. You could always go up another layer, but I want to use that area for something else. We'll talk about that later. I put one more board in the middle, make it a little sturdy. And then I went through and put these stops on, just so your milk jugs don't slide around. I just set them all in place, marked them, and then moved the milk jugs and just screwed them in. Now you could do this, or you could just strap them down with Velcro, which I'll show you in a minute. But this is kind of cool, it looks like a little chicken ladder. Alright, so that's all set up. You don't really need this, but Keely wanted something so that she could decorate it, make it look nicer. These are 1x4s. You could go ahead and put 1x6s, 1x8s. You could totally cover up the milk jugs and not even see them. Totally up to you. So this will hold everything in place where I don't have to strap each one down. But if you want to, just use a little bit of Velcro. It's garden Velcro. It's meant to be outside. It's cheap. I think it was about 3 bucks for 50 feet. Now you use the boards and the Velcro on the end to hold everything in place. Just strap the jugs together like this. And then you don't have to use PVC and PVC elbows. Plus it helps aerate the water going through all these irregular spaces. And this is how we fixed up the return. Just use milk jugs. I even used the Velcro to hold the hose in the top. It worked and it's cheap. Hey, right, now the pump. I just got one on Amazon. And everyone asked me about the pump. They're always saying gallon per hour. How much gallons per hour do you need or liters per hour? And that's not really important for this. For fountain, that's important. But for this, we don't need it falling like a waterfall. We just need it to trickle in each one and keep the water recirculating. So the important thing is the lift, how high it has to go. So in my system from here to here, remember it's 16 inches each slope, it's just 32 inches. My ledge is about 24 inches, so this top point is less than 6 feet. So I got a pump that lifts 10 feet. So you have to look for lift. Now that might seem a little excessive, but if your system is as high as the max height on the pump, it will just trickle out the top. So you want to exceed that. And if it flows too fast, you can always get one of these cheap valves to control the flow. There's also a control on most of the pumps. So when you're looking for a pump, don't be too concerned about this number. Look for this number. Because you can always control it with this valve. Let's talk about these areas. Well, since we're growing vertical, we can always put more milk jugs, but why not maximize the space and use these areas too? This first ledge is just a nursery tray, and that's where we have our plants growing. We've got our microgreens giving them a head start so when we harvest this lettuce we can just switch them out real quick. This area down here I had mylar bags and tomatoes and they grew really well really enjoyed it but we don't want the plants growing up that tall so I still might try something down here I might put some kale, lettuce, other plants but I want this place to experiment. And this ledge up here is just going to be another nursery tray it's another experiment. And I could always take the downspouts that I already have plants in and just put them up there. These are doing just fine and I could set them up there and just let them grow. If I want to try a different kind of nursery tray, I want the holes in the side. And we'll talk about this in another video. But I just put my microgreens in here, use a little hydroponic sponge. Like I said, we'll talk about this in another video, but this is a good way for my plants to get started and I'll have lots of plants ready to go when we harvest the lettuce or whatever plants are in there. We've got some ready to go right behind of it and we keep the system going over and over and over again. So these areas are just maximizing my space where I can grow. All right, now the nutrients is the same formula I use for everything. 
I'll link that video up above and you can go check that out. I grow mostly leafy greens so this is all I use and I never change it. And when you first start your system up, I have about 20 gallons in this 27 gallon tote. Now when you first turn it on, each one of these containers holds about a half a gallon. So if we have about 20 jugs, it's going to hold about 10 gallons. So when you first turn it on, this is going to drop 10 gallons. So I have a couple of 5 gallon containers standing by. Turn it on, everything starts running right. And then I just refill this. And I dump another 10 gallons of nutrients in it. Then everything's topped up, ready to go. Now if your pump goes off, all of these containers will hold half a gallon and all of your plants won't die right away. If you have a problem, you have time to go and fix it and you won't lose an entire crop. Now the plants, I just use transplants from the store. It's a quick start. You can check out my other videos on how I use microgreens. But if you're a beginner, this is the easiest way. I just cut some pool noodles. I take the plants out. Rinse off the roots. Now since you have a pump, you're going to want to try and get as much off as you can. I don't stress out and try to get everything out. Just about like that. Don't squeeze your plant too tight. Repeat the process. And you're all set up. Now this doesn't need to run 24 hours a day. In fact, you can run it just a couple hours a day if you need to. I like to keep it running about 18 hours. Keeps the water flowing. Keeps it aerated. And then I turn it off about 6 hours at night. So if you want to grow one of these systems, start saving up your milk jugs now. Maybe use other containers. Look at things in a different light. See what you can use instead of sending it to the landfill. And go grow you some food. Till next time, keep on growing.